Today we're talking about evaluating meat pens, single fryers, and market rabbits. Today we've got two fryers in front of us. A fryer is a rabbit that's under 70 days old, and that's what we use to comprise our meat pens at county fairs, 4-H fairs, and ARBA conventions and shows throughout the country and really throughout the world. So a fryer is under 70 days old and weighs between three and a half and five pounds, five and a half pounds. The two rabbits in front of us today are in fact between three and a half and five and a half pounds and are under 70 days old. Slight variation between the two on weight, but they have big differences between them in terms of structure. And we're gonna take some time today to evaluate those minute differences to help you in picking out your meat pen and getting your meat pen or single fryer ready for your next competition. Before we begin, there's several tools we need to uh, start this endeavor. First of all, an ARBA standard of perfection. In here are the guidelines written around the description of an ideal single fryer or meat pen rabbit. There's nothing better to figure out what your rabbit should look like than this book right here. So, number one tool, ARBA standard of perfection. Secondly, numbers don't lie. We have rulers for a reason in judging. We can measure things. Objective measurements, again, something you can't deny. We're gonna use this. And we're also gonna use a pair of calipers to evaluate um, some of the width and depth of the parts of our single fryers. So, let's get back to these rabbits. We've got two here that are completely different in a lot of ways. Where are they similar? They're similar in age. They're almost similar in size, but they're very different in structure. If we grade one A and one B, we're gonna look at this rabbit right here as our grade A. Grade A meaning the most ideal in terms of the written text in the standard of perfection. Grade B is gonna be the rabbit with the most faults. And these are great rabbits to compare to or against each other because they're so different. Honestly, if we had a bigger class, there'd be probably many more rabbits between the two of them. But for a video purpose and for your learning purposes from where you're at at home or uh, getting ready for your next show in your barn, these two rabbits make a big difference and an impactful evaluation standard. All right, when judging meat pens and single fryers, essentially meat pen again is three single fryers, they have to be judged primarily on their meat type. It's actually 40 points in the overall standard for the um, these young rabbits. So we're gonna focus on the differences in meat type for these. Shoulders are actually the least important part of the meat, um, of the meat type. If we read our standard, it actually says, the third most important part shall be considered the shoulders, the four quarters. That's how much muscle we find on the front legs. One of the most agreed upon um, kind of theories is that regardless of A and B or A through Z, most meat rabbits will produce very similar, very consistent meat quality and muscling on the front legs. Therefore, if we're going to be evaluating let's say a really big fair or an FFA event or a 4-H fair, the most variation is gonna be found between the loin and the hips. And that's where the big points are. The best way to look at a hind end or the, the hips on a rabbit is to look at them from your angle right now. We're gonna use this as grade A. Grade A meaning the better of the two rabbits. This one, let's call it grade B. If we had more in front of us today, there'd actually probably be a lot more separation, but we're gonna keep it simple. So this hip, let's talk about it. You can see from your angle, the width and the depth of the hindquarter is meaty, it's thick, and it's uniform all the way down. Now contrast it with this one right here. Keep in mind this rabbit is smaller, but if this rabbit was maybe a pound bigger, you'd still see the same angles. That is, the hips taper in at the lower part of the body, the loin starts off in width here and then tapers more in the shape as we approach the lower hind quarter. This rabbit has a super wide loin right here, continues in uniformity and blends beautifully into the hip and structure of the latter part of the rabbit. If you've been to a rabbit show, you see a lot of judges pose rabbits up and they get down and they look like this. And we're actually at that point looking for the shape of the spine and the depth of body. That's how tall the rabbit gets as we approach the hips, all right? So uh, in this grade A, I'll evaluate to make sure that there's rise and that there's a turn over the, the hindquarter or the, the climax of the rabbit that's just back here near the hips and the loin. Um, when talking about the loin, 
it needs to be deep. If you don't have a deep loin, you don't have a deep rabbit. So if you don't have a deep rabbit, when you get down like this and view, you see a flat rabbit, okay? Flat rabbits are never good when it comes to meat production. You need a rabbit with a deep wide loin. So this depth of loin right here, starting here from the back of the rib, has about that width or that height. Take your calipers, back to the last rib, okay? Take your objective measurement. It's about two inches in depth, okay? Let's contrast it with grade B over here. Last rib, loins right here. The depth of this loin is around one inch or a little bit more. So you can already see if depth of loin is important, this one has a far greater advantage. So back to a summary on evaluating meat type. Shoulders, least important. Big points on meat type, loin and hips. Running your hands, using your eyes, and objective measurements to evaluate how long, how deep, and how wide loins are are all important in figuring out which meat rabbit, which fryer is the best for your pen or single fryer project.